Human beings fascinate me, being just the way they are. Tell me, little pony, can you push a cart or drive a car? Liar is my instrument, but humans strum their sweet guitar. It's a mystery. Anthropology. Fingers, toes and tiny noses, brownish hair and tannish skin. Would it be too much to ask to see the world they're living in? Oh wait, that's Equestria Girls. Yes, Equestria Girls, my introduction to Friendship is Magic, but like most people, even I was a little sceptical about a sequel, and early sneak peeks didn't help. Honestly, I thought it would be like a cross between the first film and K-On. Oh, and Sunset Shimmer would become the next Trixie. So, was that a fair prediction, or is it better than that? This is Rainbow Rocks. This story begins once upon a cafe where we're introduced to these three that we've never seen before at the end of the first film. Who then look evil before the opening, which reminds us of what happened in the first film. Get used to that. After which we see the students at Canterlot High preparing for another festival. And Sunset Shimmer is struggling to fit in when Pinkie Pie calls at her from across the hall. Wait, why doesn't the CMC trust her? Well, we then get something that is expected. Celestia arrives to spout exposition. This is a wonderful opportunity to raise money for all our after-school programs here at CHS. I think it's going to be one of the most exciting events we've had at CHS since the fall formal. Yeah, thanks Celestia. That gives way to the main five's band practicing and the most commonly asked question among people who have already reviewed Rainbow Rocks. If Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash and Pinkie Pie are meant to be teaching Sunset Shimmer about friendship, why is she not in the band? Now, I could believe she didn't want to be in the band because she was worried she'd transform into a demon like how the others transform into ponies, especially since they were just talking about her turning into a demon. But if you don't say it, then it's just guesswork. You don't have to make it a focus, just be a passing phrase. A demon. I turned into a raging she-demon. It's a shame you can't be in the band, darling. I reckon you'd have a wonderful singing voice. See? Problem solved. No plot holes. But then Flash Sentry arrives on the scene. I don't suppose any of our friends from, uh, out of town might come? Twilight's is way foo. Anyway, Sunset Shimmer is then called to show the three girls we saw earlier around the school. And to all those people who complained about how all the characters in the first film were all in skirts, look! She's wearing trousers! And she's wearing a play suit! Also shoulder pads. This is Adagio, Sonata and... the one in trousers. The new girls at Cantalot High with some pretty fancy jewellery. Well after their tour they then enter the lunch hall and cause a bit of a stink. Was green really the best colour for negative energy? Wouldn't red or orange or even gold have worked better? Well, after seeing that, Rarity, Applejack, Pinky, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, and Sunset Shimmer go to find an adult. Or Celestia. Dark magic? I find that very hard to believe. Eh, uh, Celestia, remember this? And this? And this? I mean, I know the person who did all those things is the one standing in front of you, but given that she comes from a world with magic and you don't, you could call her something of an expert on the subject. Mind you, Celestia has never really been a hub of bright ideas. CONTINUITY! With that and some humming and haying, Sunset Shimmer finds this book in her locker that she used to use to message Princess Celestia, that she hopes that she can use to get a message to Twilight back in Equestria about their current predicament. Actually, take note of this scene, I'll have more to say about it later in this video. It's been a long time since I've written these words. And it'll be the last time we hear these words. Dear Princess Celestia. So Twilight gets a message to Celestia, and don't you hate it when someone else picks up your mobile? She finds that the new girls at Cantalot High are the Sirens. But Star Swirl must have sent them there ages ago. How come they're just surfacing now? Nah. If the connection is totally cut off, how would Sunset Shimmer able to get a message to Twilight? It's nice to see clever Pinkie Pie again. And after some MacGyvering, Twilight is able to open the portal so she and Spike can go to the human world, where they are met by Sunset Shimmer. And from now on you'll have to get used to her standing awkwardly in the background with her hands to her chest. I'm not joking. Another thing I'm not joking about is they go to the cafe for a catch-up, particularly about a certain boy. Flash Sentry was asking about me? <clears throat> Isn't that nice? Jeez is way foo. But they do talk about more than Flash Sentry, like how Twilight is now the princess of friendship and how the others transform when they play music. Also, Sunset Shimmer gives us this line. Wow, that's really impressive. Guess you really were Princess Celestia's prize pupil. Remember that, I'll talk about it again later. In the meantime, the main seven go to the big party, or fight, to confront the Dazzlings and prevent the battle of the bands. So Twilight, Applejack, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash hold hands and...
Yeah. After that, Twilight ponders what should be done about the sirens. Mind you, next swim class, the problem should take care of itself. Actually, now that I think about it, do these kids ever even go to class? I mean, we see them going to class, but never in a lesson. They're always preparing for events, singing songs, or trying to take over the world. Eh, uh, no offence. It's like Oran High, only without the crush dressing. Mind you, Pony Honey Senpai would break many a door meter. And after Rarity invites Twilight to sing in their band, still leaving Sunset out, they have an argument about whose band it is. Like, as in lead singer? Cause that's usually my gig. This being my band and all, it's our band. Bam! That just happened! Oh yeah! We have to stay up out of here! Please do not drop the microphones. Also learn how to rap. Yeah, we're suddenly in the competition, and hey, is that Fufflepuff? Anyway, one person we and Twilight do meet is Flash Sentry. She. You guys hear something? Eh? And then you decide to come back here just so you could beat me in the Battle of the Bands. What? No, Flash, that's Twilight. You're Waifu, you're Juliet, and now you made her cry. Yo, bad man. After that heartbreaking scene, we're given what is probably one of the better scenes in the film. It's when Sunset Shimmer confronts the sirens. Not only is it well shot, but it shows how no matter what development she's gone through, she's still seen as the bad guy to most at Cantalot High, and so there's nothing she can do to stop them. Although during the competition, you'll notice a difference between the Rainboom songs and the Dazzling songs. Now I know the main six are playing at 20% less cool for the sake of the plot, but their songs seem strangely generic, especially given that music plays a core plot device throughout the film. Now I'm not complaining, but I find the difference quite jarring, especially since we've heard the main six sing better songs in the past. Of course, Rainbow Dash starts to show off and is about to reveal the plan to the sirens, meaning that Sunset Shimmer has to jump on the stage to stop her, where they are subsequently booed off the stage. Oh yeah, and Octavia talks. I find this less significant than Lyra and Bon Bon, but there you go. But then Celestia announces that Trixie was beaten by the Rainbooms, despite them not finishing their act, allowing Adagio to plant a seed of distrust that will allow Trixie to give them a shove in the wrong direction. She didn't shove them, she pulled the lever! Ugh, oh, go back to sleep, Sonata. And we rejoin our intrepid heroines, uh, squabbling. Um. This seems like a good point to bring up my biggest complaint of the film. Remember the part in the cafe where Sunset Shimmer only said one line and had no other significance in the scene? And then there's this scene. Sunset Shimmer stops the main five fighting in a way that flows very well with the narrative, but then Twilight's crowed barred in. Both of these scenes seem so forced, I think Twilight originally wasn't written into Rainbow Rocks. Hear me out. At the start of the film, Sunset Shimmer seems to be the focus, but then Twilight arrives at Counter Lot High, and Sunset Shimmer seems to spend a lot of the time standing awkwardly in the background. Although the fact that she's bright orange probably doesn't help. But scenes where Sunset Shimmer is the focus seem less awkward. Which makes me think that this book was originally this book, and it was Sunset Shimmer who originally figured out that the Dazzlings were the Sirens, and it was originally Sunset Shimmer who was struggling to write the counterspell while the Rainbooms worked on getting into the final. I also think we were originally meant to see where Sunset Shimmer lives. After all, Twilight camped in the library, but Sunset lives in the human world. This would have meant that the sleepover would have meant more than just padding for time, which is why I skipped talking about it. It would have been the main five reaching out to Sunset Shimmer in the only way they knew how, or the only way they knew she'd accept. But then some of the higher ups at Hasbro saw that this wouldn't help sales the Twilight doll, so they told DHX to put her in the film. I don't know if that's right, I might be wrong for all I know, but it's just how I feel about those scenes. Oh well, at least we get the best Pinkie Pie freak out ever. By the way, how did they fall backwards yet land face down? Anyway, Spike and Vinyl Scratch break them out from under the stage, and they all go to the top of the hill where... Ah! Hello, Auto Trader! I want that! Anyway, after that moment of awesomeness, the sirens using the negative energy they absorbed from the rain booms while they were fighting under the stage begin one of the most epic battles. She's his waifu. After that, Sunset finally joins the band. Twilight and Spike go back to Equestria. 
and we close on Sunset Shimmer writing in her book. So that was Rainbow Rocks. And is it better than the first film? Yeah. But it's not as good as it could have been. And in my opinion, that makes it worse. Because it doesn't matter what it is, car, video game, or in this case a film, I'm of the opinion that the people making it should have done the best job they could have. And I don't get that from this film. It seems to lose focus on whose story it should be. Is it Twilight's or Sunset Shimmer's story? It should be Sunset Shimmer's redemption story, and it does start out like that. But then Twilight arrives and it doesn't seem to be able to decide who the focus should be on, often pushing Sunset to the background or forcing Twilight into the foreground. If I did have ratings, I probably would give this film a 6 out of 10 because it does get more right than wrong. And despite some Luna face and a reappearing gem, the animation is better than the first one. But it's a lack of focus throughout the film that can't justify me giving it more than a passable rating. We're still waiting for an excellent Equestria Girls film. No doubt about it, Spike. There's definitely something strange going on at that school. Now that looks promising.